Hey guys, I want to talk about growth hormone and sermorelin today. My name is Dr. Philip Oob and I'm a functional medicine doctor in Austin and we're going to talk a little bit about growth hormone. So many people don't know much about growth hormone um, and the reason why is because it's not a routine lab that most doctors check. Growth hormone is a hormone that's produced by the pituitary inside of the brain and it goes throughout the body and it actually tells cells to regenerate and uh, tissues to grow. It converts your uh, thyroid hormone to the more active thyroid hormone from T4 to T3. It increases your basal metabolic rate, which basically is your metabolism, as people call it. So if you're wondering, like, why can't I lose weight based on I'm, what I'm eating? I'm eating a calorie deficit, yet I'm not losing weight. One of the problems can be low growth hormone. If you're struggling to put on muscle mass, growth hormone directly um, stimulates muscle mass. Um, and so if you're working out at the gym and not making the gains that you expect or that you have in the past, then you might be struggling with growth hormone. Uh, growth hormone also helps with sleep. It regulates the sleep-wake cycle. And the catch-22 behind that is that actually as your sleep gets better, you release more growth hormone. And as you have more growth hormone, you sleep better. Conversely, if you're not sleeping well, you're not releasing enough growth hormone. And if you're not releasing enough growth hormone, then you're not sleeping well. And so it actually goes hand in hand. And that's one of the difficult things to control sometimes when you're in a bad cycle and you're not feeling well. So we can use um, medications like sermorelin and peptides to boost the growth hormone. So this is a vial of sermorelin here. So let me just start off by reading some of the benefits. I just mentioned a few, but um, it, it's sermorelin and growth hormone are incredible hormone, and most people don't really think it's real because it's got so many great benefits and very few downsides. So improved quality of sleep, increased energy, increased basal metabolic rate, which is your metabolism, uh, builds muscle, hastens fat loss, it speeds up how quickly you lose weight, it tightens skin, some people even inject it into their face in order to improve wrinkles, um, it improves your stamina, stamina. Um, you get more focus, more mental clarity, uh, it increases your bone density. So women with osteopenia and osteoporosis, it may be that they haven't had enough growth hormone for years and decades, and that's why the, the bone mass is decreasing. Now, that's also true because growth hormone builds muscle, and muscle stimulates bone growth. So if you don't have enough muscle, you're not gonna have enough bone growth. Um, and so in order to put on more bone, one of the key treatments is actually to build more muscle. One of the ways to build more muscle is to get more growth hormone. Uh, let me continue. It improves immune function, quickens regeneration and healing of wounds, cuts, scars, etc. So growth hormone does a whole lot of stuff all around the body. Um, it, it goes and surges all throughout the day, and so it's constantly up, down, up, down, up, down. And um, based on what you're eating and what you're doing is how high it's gonna go or how low it's gonna go. Um, some of the natural things you can do to improve growth hormone, one is gonna be to cut the carbs. So if you lower your carb intake, your growth hormone will naturally start to rise. Number two is gonna be to get um, intense physical activity. So I know a lot of people that go to the gym or run or work out and whatnot, but if you're not hitting that intense um, stimulating the body where you can barely breathe, you're working out so hard um, for at least 10, 15 seconds multiple times throughout your workout, then you're not really getting the intensity that you need and you're not getting that growth hormone stimulus that you, you really want and need. That's one of the reasons if you've picked up a workout routine recently, uh, you notice you get so hungry when you start working out and that's because the growth hormone is starting to go around the body and starting to stimulate tissue growth um, and naturally when you're building new stuff, you need more nutrients and so that's why you get hungry. So um, there's some other natural supplements out there that say they can boost growth hormone. I haven't been the biggest believer in any of them. I haven't really seen much of it come, uh, come to fruition uh, or many good studies on it. But what I have seen a big benefit in is when I balance people's hormones. So if you're a male and you've got low testosterone, um, once we boost your testosterone, a lot of times your growth hormone will go back up to the optimal level. Um, or females, um, if your estrogen and progesterone aren't very well balanced, once we balance those, and we boost your testosterone up a little bit, uh, the testosterone or the, the growth hormone will then reach its optimal level. The growth hormone decreases in every person by about 14% per decade of life. 
Um, and so when you were a baby, you had sky high levels. When you were a teenager, sky high levels. Um, and then when you hit your 20s, you kind of settle into a, a, a baseline range. And so my optimal range is around 200 for most people. It changes with your height. So if you're a six foot five person, then you're supposed to be a little higher than 200. Um, and conversely, if you're a five foot two person, then um, I expect a growth hormone around 150. Now that's different for every person. And so I check levels very routinely and watch them. And so if, if I get you at a certain level and all of a sudden six months later, you're lower than that level, um, then we know we've got something to work on and vice versa. If you're really on par with your nutrition, your exercise is on point and you're higher than I expected you to be, then that's where you really want to aim all of your life. And so if you ever start to dip below that level, then we need to talk about um, what are you doing that's making it go lower and what can we do to boost it back up? So, um, one of the things I frequently use in my practice for people who want to boost their growth hormone level up quicker is sermorelin, and that's what's in this vial right here. So sermorelin is a peptide. It's a um, it's it's a synthetic peptide, but it mimics our own brain's uh, hormone. So I mainly talked about growth hormone, but growth hormone is released by. Um, odd name, growth hormone releasing hormone. And so that growth hormone releasing hormone starts in the brain and goes to a different part of the brain, the pituitary, and then the pituitary releases the actual growth hormone. So why did I mention that? I mentioned that because that's what sermorelin is. Sermorelin is a precursor to the growth hormone. So if you want more growth hormone, then you need more growth hormone releasing hormone. And so I already talked about the ways that you can boost your own growth hormone releasing hormone, but this is a way to boost it even further. Um, the sermorelin is basically a, the, a shorter version of the human body's growth hormone releasing hormone. So it is technically bioidentical because it is, is, it is, it is the same um, protein shape, but it is missing a few amino acids. So it's not technically fully bioidentical, but for our purposes, it is the bioidentical hormone. Um, I like to use sermorelin in combination with GHRP2 and GHRP6. Um, these two peptides um, also go to the pituitary and stimulate more release of growth hormone. I like to use all three because I find that it has a, kind of a synergy. So the sermorelin is the growth hormone releasing hormone. The GHRP2 and GHRP6 also go to the same area and tell the pituitary not only to make more growth hormone, they actually tell those somatotropes, the cells in the pituitary that make the growth hormone, to actually divide and multiply. So it's telling those cells that are already making enough growth hormone that, hey, we need more growth hormone, so make more factories. So the cells multiply the amount of DNA that's being produced to make the protein growth hormone um, begins to multiply. And so your growth hormone levels start to climb and climb and climb. So most people notice almost an immediate benefit with, with sermorelin. Um, the, the biggest thing I keep hearing is that sleep is incredible. And so that's kind of like the catch 22 I told you about earlier. As soon as your growth hormone levels start to go up, you just get deep, just like sleeping like a baby type sleep. And then that sleeping like a baby sleep also benefits your growth hormone level to go up even higher. And so once both of those are working, then your growth hormone level just keeps climbing and climbing. So, um, the, the other benefits to the sermorelin is that there is a ceiling effect. You can inject as much of this as you want to, but your body has a ceiling effect. It's got its own regulators in place. So your, your, your growth hormone can't go too high by injecting more sermorelin. Um, I actually had one of my patients who was drinking a little bit too much one night and thought he was drying up his testosterone and drew up his sermorelin and took 50 times the normal dose of sermorelin and he did fine, nothing happened. He just had a hot flash afterwards and got really hungry. So it's a very safe peptide. Um, it is an injectable as I just mentioned but um, it, it just stimulates the growth hormone. So because it's got that ceiling effect, you can, in, I, I wouldn't encourage you to inject as much as you want, but it's extremely safe because of that. Whenever I talk about growth hormone, I always want to mention the bodybuilders. So the bodybuilders, if you've seen the bodybuilders these days, the ones that are really jacked and just artificially looking, they're, they're just not real humans. Um, they're actually injecting real growth hormone. The, the growth hormone that your pituitary makes, um, that exact growth hormone is what they're injecting. That is different because there is no ceiling effect to injecting growth hormone. The more growth hormone that you inject, the bigger you get, the more muscle you get, the bigger your bones get, everything. And so um, I, I don't support that kind of behavior. Um, there are some people that inject growth hormone at appropriate amounts, and that's a different story, but there's not really a regulation by the body for growth hormone. 
that's different from sermorelin because sermorelin is regulated. If you inject too much, your body just won't really be able to use it. And then it just kind of goes to waste. Your body breaks down the peptide and, and it goes away. So sermorelin is very safe and easy to inject. Um, the three peptides, sermorelin, GHRP6, and GHRP2, each have its own kind of personality. The main goal is to boost uh, growth hormone, trim fat, build muscle, all that. But um, GHRP2 is kind of known as the recovery peptide. So if you're struggling from a tendonitis or a bursitis or some sort of um, inflammatory um, joint condition or musculoskeletal pain, then the GHRP2 can really uh, boost the healing on that. GHRP6 is known more in the bodybuilding world and more of a muscle builder. And so you'll see some bodybuilders injecting just GHRP6. I like to use the blend and I don't like to use any of them in extremely high doses. I like to use them as a synergy. And I find that when we use the synergy, we can actually use lower dosages of each one. So the sermorelin is, um, comes in a freeze dried state and kind of see the powder there. And so the powder is in a, a vacuum in here. And so before you take the sermorelin home, we'll help you mix it and show you how to mix it if you ever want to do it on your own at home. And then once it's mixed, it has to go in the fr refrigerator. It is a peptide and it is a protein. And because of it, it doesn't last forever. It has to stay nice, cold and dark in order for it to last the longest. Because it's a peptide and has a 3D conformational shape, we say, a kind of a protein form, um, if you do anything to disrupt that form, it won't turn dangerous, it'll just turn itself off. So you gotta take really good care of it once you use it. And it only lasts anywhere from 30 to 60 days. Some people can milk it to 90 days, um, but the less you inject, the less benefit you get. And so if you're milking it out to 90 days, the only problem is that I don't know how much of it is gonna be active by that point. Um, the pharmacy only certifies it for 28 days. It's still active afterwards, but you're starting to lose product kind of after that that point. Not a ton of it, but a little bit. And then of course, I always have to throw out the warning that if the solution ever gets cloudy um, or starts burning at the injection site, you might want to consider throwing it out because it might have gotten um, contaminated. The biggest side effect I've, I have with sermorelin, GHRP2, and GHRP6 when using them in a blend is um, after you inject it, you get really hungry. Um, it's only about 30% of people that get hungry, but it is a gnawing on cardboard kind of hunger. You could eat anything. Um, and so I always warn people that before they inject that you don't want to eat because if you do eat, it actually lowers the ability of the sermorelin to work. It lowers the growth hormone spike. So you don't want to eat. If you are going to eat anything, then try to only eat protein and fats because like I said earlier, carbs actually lower growth hormone production. So sermorelin is injected at night. You can inject it anytime, it's not dangerous, but your largest growth hormone spike is overnight while you're hitting those deep stages of sleep. So it's somewhere around three to four hours of your sleep as long as you're getting deep rested sleep and not a lot of interruptions with like a newborn baby or dogs or cats or anything in the room, then that's when your biggest spike is. So we want the sermorelin to be as close to that big spike as possible. So you're actually injecting the sermorelin right before you go to bed. Um, not for any reason other than to boost the growth hormone. Some people think, oh, it's before bed, so I'll just do it two hours before. No, it's a peptide. It doesn't last that long in the body, so you need it as close to going to sleep as possible. I often tell people just to prepare the needle and have it at the bedside with their alcohol swab, and that way, right when they're curling up, ready to go to sleep, you can just stick the needle in, go, and you can go right off to sleep. Um, now, if you're one of those people that gets the hunger, you probably won't be able to go to sleep through the hunger. It kicks in pretty quickly. Usually within 30 to 60 seconds, you're already feeling the hunger. So you do want to inject it as close to bedtime as possible and you don't want to eat any sugar afterwards. One of my patients ate an entire tub of peanut butter after injecting his sermorelin. And so that definitely voided his sermorelin dose that night. And so he practically had to put a deadbolt on the door in order to stop doing that. Um, and so we actually lowered the dose and, and, and it went away. So, uh, or it became tolerable, it didn't go away. So that's one good thing about sermorelin because if you do get the hunger pangs with it, then you know that it's active and it's good sermorelin and it's working for you. Some people get less desirable side effects. Some people get a headache, a stomach ache, nausea, that kind of stuff. And so everyone's a little different, but mostly it's GI upset or um, hunger. Hunger is the most common one. And so if it's unbearable, we can always manipulate the, the peptide, manipulate the dose and, and change in order to reduce that because it's not life-threatening side effects, but it's certainly not fun. So uh, sermorelin, just to kind of recap, is a growth hormone booster. It mimics our own growth hormone releasing hormone in our brain that stimulates our pituitary to release more growth hormone. And then this growth hormone goes all around the body, stimulating um, tissue to grow 
muscles to grow, bones to grow, all that. If you're wondering how to test your growth hormone levels, you actually wanna check the level called IGF-1. Um, that's insulin-like growth factor one. The reason why is because I, I talked about earlier, growth hormone actually goes up and down, up and down, up and down all day long. And so it's if you check the growth hormone level, you could get a low number, but five seconds after you draw your blood, it could be a high number. And so growth hormone is a terrible lab to check, but this insulin-like growth factor is a much more stable protein that's floating in the bloodstream, and it directly correlates to your growth hormone um, kind of area under the curve. And so what I mean by that is how much total growth hormone did you release in 24 hours? That's about what your IGF-1 level will be. Whereas if you just spot check your growth hormone level, you're not gonna get a good answer. Um, there are endocrinologists that can do a real growth hormone testing. They do it overnight and they take frequent blood samples and stuff, but that's more detailed than we really need to know. The IGF-1 is, is really great at detecting how much growth hormone you have. So that's about all I have to say about growth hormone and sarmorellin. Uh, there's, of course, more I could talk about. I'm open to any questions or comments that you may have. And of course, you're welcome to read my website about sarmorellin and GHRP2 and GHRP6. I guess one more thing I wanna show you is that uh, we did talk about an injection, but it is an insulin needle. It's a tiny little injection um, that's done in the fat tissue of your belly. Uh, you can do it in your thigh or your arm, wherever you feel comfortable. It just needs to go in some fat somewhere. And so uh, many people always freak out about an injection, but I will tell you that if you do it right and you listen to how I tell you to inject it, a, a mosquito bite hurts more than these things. So if you can tolerate a mosquito bite, you can probably tolerate these things. So just to show you again, this is the needle. It's a little insulin needle. It's the same needles that people use for insulin. And that's the needle. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but there it is. It probably appears larger in the camera than it is in real life. I've never had anyone doing sermorellin decide to quit because the pain was too much or the needles were too big. So don't let that scare you. And if you are scared, then uh, let me give you a test injection in the office. And if you think it's horrible, I would be surprised. So that's it on sermorellin and growth hormone. Um, get researching, feel free to ask me any questions and let me know what you think. Uh, like and share this video if you think it was helpful.